by two laps was not mixed up in it. Chick Morgan is still second, but with only two miles to go, I don't think he'll be able to catch him. Morgan's catching up on us. Watch me throw a scare in him. Quit crowding, Foster. No sense in Foster driving like that. That's the second time Foster's crowding. And here comes Foster lapping some of the stragglers. A little more pressure, stuff, and watch me take them. Listen, I quit. I'm a nervous wreck. I can't stand it. I suppose you can't use part of the prize money, eh? Yeah, but most of it will go for a room in the sanitarium. I'm telling you, I'm too nervous to be doing this. protest against Foster. He kept crowding me on those turns. I tried my best to signal him all That's the way. It's all right, Morgan. I saw it with my own eyes. We'll take care of him. Thanks. I want to introduce you to Councilman Baker, Westport. Glad to know you. It's mutual. Stub Wilson's my name, Councilman. My mechanic. As long as you're going to enter the Westport races, I thought it would be handy to know some of the big shots up that way. Sure, it's always handy to know some of the big shots, in case you want to get a traffic ticket fixed or something. Councilman Baker's quite a fan. Never miss a race, do you, Councilman? That's right. Well, nothing I can do for you when you get to Westport, let me know. Thanks a lot. Don't spend all that prize money in one spot. I won't. See you again soon. So long, Wilson. So long. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have a little surprise here for you. The judges have decided upon a disqualification. For unnecessary recklessness and infraction of track rules, Bill Foster in car number seven has been disqualified. Well, I'll be... First place goes to Chick Morgan in car number 12. They can't get away with that. Yes, and that stands, too. Say, what kind of a track are you guys running here? Yeah, what kind of a track are you running here, anyway? Highway robbery. And without a gun. Well, you can't talk to us like that, Foster. I can't, eh? No. Shut up. Now, look here, young man. Now, you listen to me, and I'm going to have my say. There's no use your arguing, Foster. You're disqualified. Yeah, and I suppose I'm responsible for all those crack-ups out there, too. No, definitely not. They were behind you. So was every other car when I crossed the finish line. Now, what are you going to do about that? I'll show you what we're going to do. 
You're disqualified from this race, and now we're going to recommend your suspension from the association. You would do that, you bunch of crooks in judges' clothing. Well, we at least got our car and enough money to get to West Point. And don't forget, we're the judges. Yeah, of a dog show. Overgrown snails. Yeah. I hated the first one I ever saw, and they're still poison to me. Why don't you get yourself a horse and buggy? Get out of here. Now we can make some nuts. We'll be in Westport, nothing flat. I'll tear that guy apart. We'll murder him. Wait a minute, Bill. You grab the two big guys. I'll take the little guy. I think he's got a knife. Don't you know you're supposed to make a boulevard stop, or can't you read? Can I help it if the brakes don't work? You're the driver of the bus. You're responsible for it, aren't you? What if I am? If you hadn't been going 90... You're out of your mind. We weren't doing 90. No? No. no. We're only going 85. Oh, is that all? Is that all? Let me tell you hey, something. Hey, listen, Stub. How about a car? Who's going to pay for it? Yeah, take a look at it. Look at it down there. You'll have to take that up with Neely. These Neely buses are causing trouble anyhow. You're right. The buses are a menace to the public. I'm glad to know that. All day I've been itching for a good excuse to sock one of these bus owners in the nose, and now I got one. Oh, so you're going to take a sock of Jay Neely, eh? Yeah, maybe one of you. <laughs> wait a minute, Bill. Wait a minute. After all, he's only the bus driver. Come on. We'll take this thing up with Jay Neely. If you don't think I won't, you're crazy. So you guys don't like to ride on Neely buses, eh? Well, we well, have to. Well, let me tell you Well, what something. are we going to do There's about no it? There's no reason why you have to ride on them at all, and you don't. Hey. Where's Neely's office? Through them double doors. First office on your right. Thanks. I'll get that guy. Wait a minute, Stubb. Now, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but one of us has been a jinx for the past few days. I'll handle this alone. Me? So you think I'm the jinx? I didn't say that, but you better wait out here. OK. It's your funeral. Is there someone you wish to see? Him. But you? Yes? I want to see Jay Neely, gorgeous. Well, at least you might have had the good manners to knock, even if it didn't occur to you to be announced. Now, look here, beautiful but disagreeable. I've had enough grief with the Neely lines without you adding your little mite of good cheer. I want to see the guy that owns this bus hatchery and be quick about it because I'm in no mood for trifling. Really? Yes, really. Gentlemen usually sit in chairs, or perhaps I'm wrong in assuming... This gentleman usually sits on desks. Your assumption was correct. May I ask what this is all about? It's about a poke in the nose from me to him. Now, bring Neely out so we can get the thing over with as quickly as possible. Well? Well, what? Go ahead and poke. Who, you? Yes, I happen to be the Jay Neely, who owns this, as you call it, bus hatchery. Quit your kidding. So go ahead and take your poke, if it'll make you feel any better. Then I'll have you thrown out. Yes, Jerry? Come over to my office, will you, Mark? I'm practically there. There'll be a gentleman here in a minute to prove my identity. And also, just by the way, to take care of you. That's fine. At least it'll give me a chance to get a little work out. And in the meantime, you can write out a check for sixteen hundred dollars. That'll just about cover the cost of the damage to my car wrecked this afternoon by your bus. Oh. Shall I make it payable to the police department? You can make it payable to William Forster. Well, then you'll give it to the police department yourself. Why should I do that? Well, it'll just about cover your bail. Listen, my little lamb and tiger skin. I'm not going to any jail. Oh, yes, you are. On a reckless driving charge. Just in case you don't happen to know it. 90 miles an hour on the public highway is reckless driving. And my report on the accident states that as your speed. 
I might have expected something like that from a little tender-hearted cat your spine like you. But listen, sister. Miss Neely is the name. All right, Miss Neely is the name. There were two of us who can swear we were driving at a reasonable rate of speed at the time of the accident. And the same two can swear that your bus failed to make a boulevard stop, which is a traffic violation. And regardless of what you think, you're stuck, liable, and I'm going to collect. So sorry to be disagreeable to you, but you're not. You know, I'm not so sure, but a poke in the nose wouldn't do you a lot of good, Miss Frozen Face. You wanted me, Jerry? Yes, yes, Jerry. I mean, Miss Neely is the name sent for you to throw me out. I'll show you the shortest word. I'll be in tomorrow. Have that check ready. Come on, keep moving. You know, there's something I don't like about your face. Yeah, what? Your nose. It gets in other people's business. And what are you going to do about it? Just that. I'll be back for that check tomorrow. Have it ready. Did you collect? Not yet. Well, you socked him in the nose. I socked him in the nose, all right, but not Neely. I don't get it. It's too bad, too. She's so doggone beautiful. For the love of Mike, Bill, here our racing car is wrecked and we're broke, and chances are we'll never eat again, and you talk about a dame. Let me tell you something. If... Hey, don't tell me Jane Neely's a woman. Not quite. Just an icicle in feminine form. Let's get to a hotel. What are we going to use for money? Buttons. And we're wearing zippers. I hope your credit's good. Let's go then, boy. A large truck belonging to Jay Neely transport lines was wrecked and a valuable cargo of silks and other merchandise was destroyed when a front tire blew out at the top of Highland Drive this afternoon. Whether the blowout was accidental or the result of sabotage... Sabotage. Uh, must have been a vegetable truck, huh? Ed Pendergast was unconscious when rescuers arrived but later recovered consciousness. Physicians say he may die. The merchandise consigned to A. Hampton City firm was only partly covered by insurance. I've heard enough of that. So Jay Neely got it in the neck, eh? I feel sorry for the driver. I'll bet she's too cheap to even buy tires. I hope the driver's family stick her good. Hey, sweetheart, would you get me another donut? A little more coffee here, I'd like to soak up. She loves you. What are you doing? How long do you think we can go on on signing checks around here? Glass of water, please. Take a gander in the mirror. See that guy staring at us over there? The guy with the fish eye? What guy? The guy with the muscle-bound face. He's been watching me ever since we registered in the hotel. I don't pay any attention to him. No? He's just a house detective. Cool. We've been living here a week on credit. Got a match? Yeah, sure. Hold the match still, will you? What's the matter? You nervous? No, this cigarette weighs a ton. What have I got to be nervous about? Well, uh, give me a cigarette, too, will you? It's my last one. I'll go buy some. I'll be right back. Uh, <clears throat> take care of the check. Oh. Ruffians, who threw that pie? Don't worry about it. If they won't pay for it, I will. Uh, just put it on my bill. Can you imagine that guy throwing a pie at me in there? And I wasn't doing a thing. I was... Ah! Oh, it's okay, Mac. I'm not hurt. I was just putting the cigars away. When... I'm sorry. I'm sorry the books fell on you. I mean, I'm sorry I was the cause oh, of the books. Oh, don't be sorry. <laughs> uh, give me a package of uh, cherry pie. I mean, uh, a, pa a pan of cigarettes. Give me a package of cigarettes, please. Uh, any particular brand? I have everything. Yes. Yeah. So I see. Uh, just anything. Silly ass for cigarettes. Oh, I, I changed my mind. Say, do we have to keep that guy around here? The caller? Oh, gracious, yes. The hotel couldn't get along without him. No. No, you see, he can spot a deadbeat the minute they come in the lobby and try to run up a bill. Oh, that's what I thought. But he's awful sweet, though. Sweet? Yeah. Who, him? Mm -hmm. Take a look at his feet. I bet he had a braid his toes to put his shoes on. <laughs> Silly kid. Hey, <laughs> okay. if you're that easily to please, I ought to take you out. Why don't you, Mr. Wilson? How did you know my name? Well, Everybody knows Stub Wilson, the greatest racing mechanic out of work. Shh. Do you want me to put that on your bill? Beg your pardon? I said, do you want me to put that on your bill? Bill, she's talking to you. Call for William Foster. Mr. Foster, please. I wonder who that can be. Maybe Jerry Neely wants to settle. Shay. 
Is that a gag about taking you out? Why don't you try it sometime? <laughs> Real soon. Woo. What's that? It's a letter from the Racing Association. This puts us in a fine spot. Read it. Dear sir, you are hereby notified that from this date, June 1st, 1937, the board has found good reasons to suspend your American Automobile Association license. Mm -hmm. This suspension will prohibit you from further competition on the AA tracks. Enclosed, fine check for $2,500. You know, I'm a little disappointed in that check. I thought it was going to be bigger. <clears throat> but it was a nice race you run there, boy. You surprised me. You know, if Neely had paid us off for the damage done to our car, we could go out and drive in those outlaw tracks. Sure. And it wouldn't have been so tough trying to figure out how to stay on the inside of this hotel. Shh. After this, Bill, let's get a room on the ground floor or buy a rubber trunk. Wait a minute. I got something in my head. Me too. That's the trouble with these cheap hotels. I'm going to go over to Tommy Burnell, who runs the opposition bus line, and sell him an idea. I'll bite. But it better not be another one like poking Jay Neely in the nose. No. I'm going to get Burnell to put a racing driver on each one of his buses. Why, his line will give such fast and efficient service, it'll drive Neely out of business. Why, it's colossal. That's what we think. But what will Burnell say? Let's find out. All of them. And Bill. I think you got something there, Foster. Putting a racing driver on every one of our buses would be a great publicity stunt. Why, it's worth more than publicity, Mr. Burnell. And we can further increase your speed and efficiency by having a mechanic along with each driver. You know, in case anything goes wrong, and he can also act as conductor. You know, a good honest man to pick up those nickels and dimes. Why, you'll drive any other business out of competition in no time. Goodbye, Neely. Tell you what I'll do. I'll put you boys out on a bus just making test runs to see what can be done about shortening our schedules. If it works out, we'll put the whole scheme in operation. Thanks, Mr. Burnell. When do we start? Right away. There you are. Take that to the traffic office. Yes, sir. Uh, by the way, Foster, about that lawsuit against the Neely Company we were talking about, if you'd like to have my lawyer, Mr. Perkins, handle it for you, I'll see that he does it on a percentage basis, payable when you collect. That's fine with me, Mr. Burnell. All right, Foster. And don't forget, boys, it's speed we're after. Speed? They'll have to be going 50 miles an hour to be standing still. Stuff. These things aren't so bad once you get used to them. No. We had running water on it. We could sleep here instead of the hotel. You'd kind of miss Lucy, wouldn't you? Yeah, in a way. You know, it's that fish eye house stick that gets me down. <laughs> Pay no attention to him. He's yeah. all right. Yeah, he's all right. Nice fellow. Nice fellow. Swell guy. Swell guy. Why, he's the kind of a guy who would hold a lamp while his mother chopped the wood. Out of gas? Mm -hmm. Little lady back there in distress. What kind of a dress? In distress. We ought to go back and help her fix the tire. We? Oui. It's your idea. I'm going to catch up with some sleep. Need any help, lady? When I want any help from the Burnell Company, I'll ask for it. Maybe I'll be too far away to hear you. Sweet and independent. Oh, it's you. I might have known a flat tire was only the beginning of my bad luck. Hadn't you better let me do that? I was doing all right till you came along. So I noticed. Just how many hours have you been trying to turn that thing the wrong way? Look, I can manage this myself. I'm in no hurry. I still have a few hours left on a new test run. Well, you can use that extra time to better advantage than fixing a tire, Mr. Galahad. Go find someone to punch in the nose. Now listen, Jerry, I... Miss Neely, please. All right, then, Miss Neely, please. But I'm not in the habit of going around sucking just anybody in the nose. Only guys my size. Yes, and those who aren't get a knife in the back. What do you mean by that crack? It doesn't need explaining. Okay, it doesn't need explaining. Now, get aside, let me change that towel. <laughs> I'm sure Mr. Burnell finds you a most efficient employee. Well, at least Mr. Burnell can appreciate ability when he sees it. Yes, I'm sure he does. Even the ability to lie and cheat. Sister, you've taken one step too far. And you went one step too far when you let Tommy Burnell's lawyer talk you into filing that suit against me. Oh, so that's the reason you're so crazy about me. 
All I'm looking for is to collect the damages for my car. Oh, really? Then what's the other $8,400 for? Pin money? To take the sting out of the tongue you carry around that stubborn little head of yours. Well, no court in the country will award you any such sum. Maybe not, but it's going to cost you an awful lot of trouble to find that out. Oh, if I were only a man. Oh, baby, if you only were. Stubborn. Stubborn. And I'll have Brunel send you a bill for this. Going to Westport? Why, sure, lady. Step right in. Please, thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Tub so loose you could use it for a merry-go-round. And those rear tires are about gone, too. I'll make a note of it. What good's that going to do? You won't get it fixed till something happens. Listen, I'm running things around here. And how? If you don't like it, you can quit. There's some passengers over there. Go pick them up. Oh. Hello, Jerry. The Burr Real Estate Company needs three buses. They want to take some prospects out of their new subdivision. Well, we haven't got any buses available right now. What? Well, what's wrong with those four over there? They're out of commission. I had to lay off the extra mechanics to cut down the payroll. But that's ridiculous. We need those mechanics. Those buses out of service are a liability. Sure they are, but you've got to have money to operate. Oh, Mark, what am I going to do? What about your bank? Oh, I'm afraid that's out. Mr. Lane called me just this morning, and unless I miss my guess, I know what that means. We must insist on your reducing your loans, Miss Neely. But that's impossible, Mr. Lane. This financial statement shows more than 30% loss in gross business, and even greater loss in profits. This indicates a public loss of confidence in your line, owing to accidents, inconvenience, poor service, etc. Am I to blame if a tire blows out? Isn't that sort of thing likely to happen to anyone? The traveling public is only interested in getting where it wants to go to on time with the least amount of inconvenience. What about the merger with the Burnell line? That wouldn't be a merger, that would be an absolute steal. I wouldn't trust Tommy Burnell as, as far as I could throw this building. If you were able to effect a quick settlement of the Foster lawsuit, we might be able to extend your loans a little longer. That's just a spite suit. He can't possibly make it stick. Mm, juries have been known to do unexpected things, Miss Neely. Take my advice. Settle it as best you can right away. Now, if you'll excuse me. I'd rather take a beating than make overtures to that all right, Mr. Lane. I'll see what I can do. Good afternoon. I'll be glad when we start taking passengers. Yeah, hey, stop. You better take a look at that generator. Why? Where are you going? I'm going inside to find out if there isn't something else I can do besides drive an empty bus all over the country. Well, hurry up, will you? I'm getting hungry. Yeah, hungry for a look at Lucy's eyes. Say, they're beautiful, aren't they? Woo. They do something to you, don't they? There's only one pair of woman's eyes ever done anything to me. And someday I'm going to forget myself and sock her so hard. I'm going to tell you something. What? You're in love. <laughs> oh, me? You heard me. Listen, my little book of knowledge. When I fall in love, it won't be with any animated statue. No. You heard me. If you think I'm falling in love with Jerry Neely, you're crazy. <laughs> Why, all she means to me is... Now, wait a minute, Bill. Now, wait a minute. Did I say anything about Jerry Neely? Did I say... Hey, Smitty, did I say anything about Jerry Neely? Huh? Did I say anything about Jerry Neely? Now, put up the lights. Put up the lights. Quit fooling around, Bill. Put... Hey, Smitty. Fix that generator, will you? Hello, Foster. Hello. Uh, don't go away, Joe. I want to talk to you. Okay. Have a chair. Thanks. You know Mr. Bailey. We've met. Hi, Foster. Hi. Well, how are things going? I'm ashamed to take your money, Mr. Burnell. All I've done since I come to work for you is take an empty bus out to a town and back again. Out to another town and back again. Why, I've practically covered every highway in this state. Following your suggestion about putting on racing drivers, we wanted to check your time against that of our regular schedules. Yeah, you're doing very well, too. Doing all right. Say, I'd like to see the cop that wouldn't give a month's salary to lay his hands on me. So far, you seem to have been dodging them pretty well. I'll see about putting you on a regular run. That'll be a relief. Mr. Perkins, our attorney, was in the office today. He said that your case with Jerry Neely is likely to come up at any time. Fine. You know, I'll be glad when that thing's over. Well, in the meantime, he'd like you to sign this par of attorney. 
There may be a lot of affidavits and other papers to be made out, and you'll possibly be out of town at the time we need your signature. Where's the dotted line? Right there. Yes? Mark Banning on line two, Mr. Burnell. Oh, um, I'll have Mr. Bailey take him to the other office. Take it in there, Joe. All right, Foster. Perkins will take care of everything. You know, I feel kind of guilty about asking for so much money. All I wanted to get was my car fixed up. Well, you know what Perkins told you. The more you ask for, the faster action you get. Besides, chances are the court will only award you actual damages. Yeah, I know. That's the only reason I'm going through with it. Well, thanks, Mr. Bunnell. That's all right, Foster. I wonder if Lucy missed me today. What are you doing? Practicing up to be a clothing store dummy? I was just thinking. There's a million reasons why Banning might call up Burnell. Sure there are. I call up Lucy without any reason at all. Look at her. Ain't she a dilly? Hello, Stubby. I'll be with you in a minute. These are your pictures, Mr. Bowdy. Looks like someone's trying to cut in on you. <gasps> Isn't it a little jewel, Mr. Bowdy? Hey, Foster. Hello, Mr. Graham. How's that new racing car? Oh, fine, boy, fine. Yes, sir. We're gonna try it out on that outlaw track over in Mansfield Tuesday night. That's what I've been waiting here to talk to you about. See, we're not satisfied with the driver we had picked out, and well, we thought maybe we could arrange for you to handle the car. You don't get me, mister. Well, you're still suspended from the association, aren't you? Yes, I'm still suspended. Well, including lap money, you stand a chance of winning about five grand. That ought to mean something. I could use the money, all right. Driving on an outlaw track like that might hurt my chances of being reinstated. So you don't have to worry about that. I appreciate the offer, but it's out. Well, all right, Foster. Here's my card. In case you change your mind, let me know. I'll be sitting in the grandstand, and I hope that car of yours is as good as they say it. <laughs> I hope so, too. <laughs> good evening, Mr. Foster. Hello. No mail for me, huh? Nothing, sir. But there's a young lady waiting to see you, just beyond the entrance to the coffee shop. Lady? Well, this is a surprise. It shouldn't be. You might have known that sooner or later I'd succumb to your gallantry and charm. Don't tell me you've been waiting here all day just to flatter me. I've only been waiting a few minutes and I didn't come to flatter you. I might have known it was business. You might have. Should we talk here? By no means. If you want to talk business to me, you'll have to do so over coffee. After dinner, you hot-headed little. Look, suppose you forget all those charming little phrases and let's... Suppose you try to act like a human being for once. Oh, I know it's impossible, but try. You really don't amuse me. Well, I thought that crack about a human being would get you. All right, you win. Where do we eat? I know a swell restaurant. We can dance. No, some place where we can talk. That's right, I forgot. Business. How about the coffee shop in there? That'll suit me fine. All right. Is that your yacht, Mr. Bowdy? That's it. We'll have to take a cruise on it one of these days, Lucy. Oh, I just adore to. You know, I've always wanted to take a cruise on a yacht. All right. Oh. I'll make arrangements and get in touch with you in the next few days. <laughs> so long, Lucy. Goodbye. Isn't he cute? That's Mr. Bounty. I don't care if he's a whole mutiny. The idea of that guy tempting you to, uh, and on his yacht, too. Why, Stubby, you're jealous. Well, what if I am? Uh, I think it's cute. I go out and I work all day and come home and find you flirting with a guy that owns a rowboat. I, I mean a oh, yacht. Mr. Bounty on a rowboat. <laughs> You know, Jerry, this dinner wasn't half bad. Did you expect it to be terrible? Certainly. You want to know why? No. Just like a woman. You stuff yourself with fine foods, and then you want to settle down to talk business. Look, I don't expect you to be fair enough to do this. But I'm going to ask you to drop the suit. I was afraid of that. If I have your racing car repaired, will you drop it? If you have my racing car put in first-class condition, I might ask you to marry me. Oh, please. I might even kiss you. No, thanks. But I won't drop the suit. Why should I? I gave you one chance to pay me back for my car, and what'd you do? Well, you had me practically beaten to a pulp and thrown out of your office. <laughs> I noticed that. Poor Mark. Speaking of Banning, if I was sure that he was double-crossing you, what I did to him that morning would be nothing. I'm completely convinced that Mark Banning will never do anything to harm either me or my transportation company. Now, look, Burnell wants to put you out of business, doesn't he? Obviously. There isn't enough business for two companies to cover the same run. Well, what about a franchise? My franchise expires next month. 
And Burnell is doing everything in his power to prevent his renewal. In the meanwhile, he's putting newer buses on all your runs and grabbing off all the business. And what's been happening to you? You've had nothing but trouble, losses, and accidents. Burnell is giving A1 service to the community. When the question of the franchise comes up, you're out and he's in. Well, that's the way he'd like it to be. And that's the way it will be, unless you do something radical. Well, I'm not so sure about that. But if you're super out of the way, it'd make it a lot simpler. I can understand that. Well, what about it? Will you drop it? Please? Okay, lady. You win. You can tell your lawyer to forget it. I'll call the whole thing off the first thing in the morning. Thanks. Now that that's settled, how about my original proposition? How was that? About the kiss. Okay, Sherlock. Gosh, I'm getting hungry, Lucy. You know I never get off till 8 o'clock. Yeah, but it's quarter to 8. Oh, yeah. Where do you want to eat, Lucy? Well, Stubby, don't you remember? I asked you to come home for dinner with Daddy and me. See, that's right. I plumb forgot. You know it'll be swell. I'm going to be right pleased to meet your old man. Oh, you know him. I do. Of course, silly. You know, McCullough. M M McCullough. There he is, right over there. I call myself Lucy Mack, but my real name's McCullough. Look, Lucy, <clears throat> you don't mind if I don't have dinner with you tonight. I made an appointment with the boys, Bill and the boys, to meet them over at the cafeteria. Will you excuse me a minute? <clears throat> I'll yeah. be back in an hour. Yes? Mr. Perkins is here, Mr. Burnell. Send him right in. Hello, Perkins. What's been keeping you? I came over as soon as I could. Sit down. Now then, what's this all about? Foster wanting to drop that suit. That's what I told you on the phone. He was in here this morning and he said the whole thing's definitely off. Well, that's his privilege. It's nothing of the kind. I happen to know that if the case is dropped, the bank renews Neely's paper. Now, the only reason I gave him a job was so that he'd put the suit in your hands to financially embarrass Neely. I know that. Well, then don't give me that line about it being his privilege to drop it. We've got his affidavits, his power of attorney, use them. Of course, it's easy enough to continue the case, provided that Foster can be shut up. But if he tells the court he wants to dismiss it, that's all there is to it. When's the case come up? The day after tomorrow. The hearing was just set. The day after tomorrow, huh? Of course, if he were out of town when the case was tried. That's easy. Not so easy. But if I send him on a run to Chartersburg, that's out of the state. Yes, but when he came back and made a squawk, it didn't mean my professional neck. Don't you worry about that. There'll be no squawk. I'll take care of that. Now, look here, Tommy. Now, you do your job, and I'll do mine. I'm not letting any half-baked automobile racing driver upset my plans. Traffic office. I want Foster to make a recheck of the Chartersburg run. Send him out the first thing in the morning. Yes, sir. That'll take care of Mr. Foster. care how fast you drive when we're in our racing car, or even the roadster. But these big walruses are top heavy. Bernal wants me to break a record, doesn't he? Well, I'll show him. He didn't say anything about us breaking our necks. Something tells me he wouldn't mind if we did. What? Break our necks. I got a hunch he didn't like my dropping the suit against Jerry. Well, who did? Well, we'll never get that car repaired. Looks like we'll just go on driving a bus till the Undertaker comes for us. That's what you think. Our suspension is almost up, and the first thing you know, we'll be back on the track. We are, it'll be in one of these highway scows. In the matter of damage suit, William Foster plaintiff versus J. Neely bus lines, a private concern, and J. Neely and individual defendants. Is the plaintiff ready? The plaintiff is ready, Your Honor. Is the defendant ready? Was the defendant properly notified? She was, Your Honor. Default judgment is rendered for plaintiff. As a result of this verdict and other claims, said to total over $100,000, creditors of the Neely Lines have been called to meet tomorrow afternoon at the office of the company. It is unofficially stated that the assets of the company will be liquidated to meet these claims. The defendant did not appear in court. Well, there's no doubt that Foster deliberately double crossed me. Your lawyer should have been in court. He might have been able to do something. I know it. It's my own fault for taking Foster at his word. 
Well, if the creditors meet tomorrow, I guess that's the end of the nearly transport lines. I'm awfully sorry, Jerry. If there's anything I can do, more than I am doing. No, there isn't, Mark. You've been swell. And I think I almost believe what Foster said about you. What did he say? Nothing of importance. Forget it. Hello. This is the Drummond School. Please send a bus out to take the children to Cosmo Park. All right, I'll take care of it. Thank you. The Drummond School wants a bus to take some pupils to Cosmo Park. We have a bus that might go, but we haven't any spare drivers. The few we have are on their regular runs. They haven't been paid for a couple of weeks. I know that, but the Drummond School is one of our oldest accounts. I simply can't afford to lose it. You'll have to find somebody to take that bus on. Drivers won't work without pay. What can I do? You know, Jerry, there was a time right after your father passed on that I wanted to... Please, Mark. I asked you never to bring that subject up again. Yes, but if you'd listen to me then... What's your dolly's name? Elizabeth. She likes to go to picnics. Let me look at it. Here she has a very happy face. Well, stub old boy, old boy, it looks like we hung up another record. Yeah, if those cops catch up with us, they'll hang us. You roll the jalopy in and drag out the roadster. I'll go inside and make her out a report. Well, make her snappy, will you? I haven't seen Lucy in two days. She might be worrying about me. What is this strange power you have over women? Uh, I don't know. I guess it's a gift. Hi, Lucky. How do you get that lucky stuff? Ah, I guess you haven't seen the paper. Here, take a gander. Neely Lines lose suit. Racing driver awarded verdict. Say, you don't look very happy for a guy that just won 10,000 bucks. Hey, what about my paper? So Neely took the bus out herself, huh? <laughs> I can just picture her when those brakes don't hold and she rolls on through a stop signal. <laughs> She'll collect enough traffic tickets to paper her office. What's that? To Cosmo Park? I didn't have any idea she was going to do it, Tommy. She's got about 50 kids with her. But good heavens, Mark, if, if she takes the bus down Channing Grade, she and those kids will all be killed. They'll be all right going out there, but coming back down that Channing grade, they haven't got a chance to hold. I'll talk to you later. What are you doing in my private office? Just this. If you'd have sent me to New York, I wouldn't have been back so soon. Mr. Burnell. Oh, Mr. Mr. Burnell. Mr. Burnell. What? Give me that wheel, stuff. What's the hurry? What's the hurry? Go to a fire. I don't see no smoke. You will when these tires get hot. Now we both have a very good time, so jump in the bus and have no arguments. Help me with this basket. That's it. Bill, we're not on a racetrack. We've got to get there before that busload of kids starts down this grade.
take this wheel. total 96% of the indebtedness. So, that any action we may choose to take will be strictly within the letter of the bankruptcy law. I therefore move that we elect a committee of the creditors or their attorneys to inventory the assets of this company with a view to disposing of them to satisfy our claims. I second that. But you can't do that. Why, why that sort of thing is disgraceful. It's criminal. My dear Miss Neal, I must ask you to remember that you're talking to gentlemen. I'm quite sure the others are gentlemen, Mr. Perkins. My only doubts are concerning you. Why, I must also ask you to remember that the matter is entirely out of your hands. You're right. It is out of Miss Neely's hands, but it's out of your hands, too. My attorney here, Mr. Witherspoon, secured the claims of two other creditors and myself. He filed a petition of involuntary bankruptcy against the J. Neely bus lines and succeeded in having me appointed receiver. If you liquidate the company now, you'll only realize a few cents on the dollar. As Mr. Burnell and Mr. Perkins will take care of that. You're slandering my professional reputation, Foster. I warn you By the time the State Bar Association is through with you, you won't have a profession, Perkins. Disbarment proceedings have already been instituted against you. As Mr. Farnsworth here, the secretary of the association, will tell you. Gentlemen, there's no need of continuing this discussion here. Will you please come with me to my office? Nice work, boys. I'll see you later. I'm sorry things turned out like this, Jerry. I've nothing to say to you. Why? What are you sore at me for? Well, I must admit it was a very clever trick. You certainly had it all figured out. First you default judgment, now your receivership. Allow me to congratulate you on so successfully taking my company away from me. All right. That's the way you want to feel about me, little Miss Firebrand. Go ahead. But regardless of what you think, I'm not going to let that pack of vultures steal this company. I'm going to pay them off out of our profits. I'm going to put the equipment in first-class shape. I'm going to put new life in a dead horse. You wait and see. Yeah, what are you going to use for money? Indian beads? Money. That is a thought. Who are you calling? An old squaw I know. She's got lots of Indian beads. Hello? Hello, Graham. This is Bill Foster. Oh, well, hello there, Foster. I'll drive in that race if it's not too late. Oh, gee, that's swell, Foster. Say, how soon can you get over here? You've only got a couple of hours to qualify. Okay, fill that bus of yours up with gas. I'm on my way to Mansfield. I'll see you later. Say, wait a minute, Foster. There's another race coming off at Winchester Sunday afternoon. How about driving my car in that, too? That's okay by me. Put me down for both. I can use the dough. Well, I'll be seeing you. Tomorrow night, you're going to sit in a box and watch me win an automobile race. And Sunday afternoon, you're going to sit and watch me win another one. I'll show you how to get the door to run this outfit. But, Bill... Okay, Bill, here we are. Section in. Hey, boy, what's the name of that driver over there? Which one? The guy in the black car. Which one? <laughs> Come on, girls, here we are. What three lucky girls you are. Two lucky girls. Step in there. That's the idea. You're going to see a race, and we're just in time. Right in the front line here. Now we're going to go. Hey, who's he? This is better than any yacht, isn't it? Look, I think I'd better go down and see Bill, because you never can tell what'll happen in one of these races. Oh, Stubby, I wish you would drive her. Well, <clears throat> you see, Lucy, uh, I wanted to, but uh, it's kind of hard getting two people in a one-man car. Now, don't go away. Stay right here, and I'll be back for you right after the race. Bring Bill back with you. Huh? Hey, if Foster don't win this race, I'll help you punch him right in the nose. I'd be glad Stubb isn't driving. 
Aren't you glad Bill's driving? Well, you heard what Stubb said. Anything can happen. My heart's in my mouth. Yeah. You like Bill Stubb, Stubb's my heart? <laughs> yeah. Keep They're off. Is this the locker room? Dove, aren't you ever going to learn to run that switchboard? I've only got two hands. What this thing needs is an octopus. Bill, will you put me to drive in the bus? I can't. You can and you will. Look, you stick to that switchboard and keep your ears open for Mark Banning's calls. Get it? All right. You know, Jerry, that eat four of us soon and stuff is all right. I told you if the Nillies and the Fosters ever got together, there'd be no telling where we'd end up. Well, I can tell you where you're going to end up. In the poorhouse. I should never have let you put your prize money into this business. Don't be a pessimist all your life, Jerry. We've paid off all the creditors, haven't we? You mean you have. You think you could have stopped me? You know better than that. Come on now, chin up and a smile on your face. Oh, but Bill, we just simply can't operate without a franchise. And the city council will never renew it when we only have broken down buses to put out in the streets. We're just not a going concern. We're broke. We're licked. We haven't a chance in the world of beating Bernal to grabbing that franchise. How long have we got before the council votes on it? Fifteen days. That's not very long, is it? No. But it's just long enough, because I've already started something that's going to be a big surprise to Mr. Brunel. What, Bill? Oh, no. It's to be a surprise to you, too, Miss Curiosity. Won't you please? I believe I will. Hello. Hello? Is Lucy there? Lucy doesn't live here anymore. Stubb, will you stop playing? Playing? Yes, stop ringing the wrong bells. I resign. You can't resign. Listen, I want you to stay at that switchboard until those calls come in. Say, I'd sooner go out and wreck buses. That thing will drive you to commit murder. I'll kill somebody. Control yourself, will you? Listen, Stubb, sooner or later, Banning's going to call up Brunel. I want you to stick at that switchboard until those calls come in. As soon as they do, I'll put another girl out there. Hey, if you don't trust Banning, why don't you fire him? Shh. He may be my key to Brunel's next move. Now get back and stay at that switchboard. Hey, Bill, here's the gang. Great. Come on in, Come fellas. On in, Hello, Biff. This is the little surprise I was telling you about. Looks like a raid on a pool room. Quiet. Boys, I want you to meet Miss Neely. How do you do? do, you do? These boys are friends of mine. They're racing drivers and mechanics. They're going to help us beat Brunel to the finish line in the race for the new franchise. Well, Say, I got an idea. Will you get back to that switchboard and stay there? Now, look, fellas, we just got 15 days to drive the Brunel bus system into a pocket. You gotta run their buses off the streets and convince the councilman that the Neely bus franchise should be renewed. Jerry, you stick here. We're going out and put those buses in shape. Let's go, fellas. I wish you luck. New tires all around. Take all the spare parts off and have them painted. Rip the motor down and overhaul it thoroughly. Frank, new upholstery all around. New curtains, any broken glass, put new glass in.
Here we are, folks, the new Neely bus service. Soft cushion seats, everything new and clean. Speed, comfort, and safety, our slogan. Beat that banana butt. You own the street? You're talking through your hat. I started through that signal before it changed. Oh, no, you didn't. Officer, give this man a ticket. You bet I will, Mr. Baker. Look at that fender. You see that you slipped him with the blocking traffic. I'll see to it that the Neely buses are taken off the streets. They're the menace to the safety of our citizens. Oh, yeah? Just how do you think you're going to go about doing all that? Write a letter to the city council, I suppose. That won't be necessary. I happen to be one of the councilmen. Baker's my name, Councilman Baker. I'm also chairman of the traffic commission. Oh, well, now, wait a minute. Sign your name. Have a cigar, officer. Oh, thank you, Mr. Baker. Hello. The garage? The what? The men's... The men's locker room. Uh... Oh, stop. When would you learn? The garage is right there. Oh, sure. I can remember that. Now I forgot what I wanted to tell him. This thing is driving me crazy. Phil! What'd you find out? The franchise comes up for a vote today. From what I could find out, the council is divided. Five for us and three for Burnell. Oh, that's splendid. If it works out that way, we're OK. Anyway, I'm keeping my fingers crossed, because if the vote comes to a tie and the mayor has to vote, we're sunk. He's definitely for Burnell. Oh, I'm sure that won't happen. Anyhow, <laughs> here's hoping. About the franchise and everything. Hello, Chet. How are you? Yeah, sure. Hey, Bill. Chet Mayfield wants to talk to you. Put him on this phone. Can't you come over here and talk? Put him over here. This is going to be good. I'm beginning to feel sorry for poor Tommy Brunel right now. Hey, what hole is that? Second from the left on the top row. Hello? Chet? Yes. Say, Bill, I just crashed into Councilman Baker's sedan. He says he's going to run the Neely buses out of town. You did? But I thought Councilman Baker was on our side. What's the matter? Hold the line. Mayfield just smashed up Councilman Baker's car. Oh, Bill. Well, that's bad, Chet. Yeah. He's a power in politics, and he may make good that threat. Well, I'm glad you called me anyway. That's a nice how do you do at a time like this. Now what do we do? I don't know. Stubb, get Circle 8000. I'll get him on the phone. Maybe we can square this thing. I'll do it. Wait a minute. <clears throat> Give me that book. Lady, that's the sweetest sentence I ever heard you spoke. Here, take it. Hello. Oh, in Councilman Baker's office, please. I want to speak to Mr. Baker. Mr. Foster of the Neely Transport Company. But he has to speak to him. It's urgent. It's important. All right, I see. Thanks very much. So he won't talk to me, eh? Under no conditions. He can't do that to us. Hmm. That's what we think. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't get excited. There's another call here. Hello? Give me a line, stupid. Stupid? Let me tell you something, Banning. You can't call me stupid. Tommy, this is Mark. Listen, they're trying to get Baker on the phone. Listen to this. Oh, yes, I know all about that business. Yes, I'm glad you called. I'll get right over to the city hall and see that Baker doesn't change his mind. Now, how do you like that guy? Well, I guess you were right. I never would have thought it of him. I'm going down and punch that guy right in the nose. You sit where you are. They call me stupid. I went to school stupid. Who does he think he is? I've got an idea. If I only had my racing car. But you have. Yeah. All smashed up. A lot of good that'll do you. I told you I'd have it repaired, and I did. You mean it's... It's in the bus shed. Jerry, you're an angel. Stop. Yeah. Hold the fort. Okay. I'm off. Oh. Uh... Mind down to the city, Bailey. Take care of the office. Okay. Hey, it looks like brand new. It should. I hope it runs. Give me a hand. Where are you going? With you? Where are you going? To meet Tommy Brunell in the city hall. Well, let's go. Okay, you ask for it. By the way, are you guessing it? Well, I hope so. I told him to fill it up. Well, we're off. Hello, Lucy there. Mine's busy.
waking up. Those two boys will take care of him. What's your big hurry about? Oh, wait a minute. I'm Tommy Burnell. I'm in a big hurry. I'm on my way to the courthouse. Hello, is Lucy there? The morgue? Is Lucy there? The what? The Salvation Army. How do you like that racing car, Councilman? Isn't she a beauty? Yes, indeed. That's the car we saw doing 95 through a 20 mile zone. Yes, and he was doing 80 miles through the heavy streets. Well, Foster, this looks like it. Here, sign this. Sorry to interrupt. Why, that's sure. all right. I just wanted you to have this on account of the damage done to your car. Well, that's mighty nice of you, Foster, but I. I'm afraid I couldn't run the thing. No, but if you had a car at Indianapolis in the race next week, it would add a lot to your prestige. Hmm, so it would. Uh, but how can you... Uh... Drive it? Why, I've been reinstated. I'll not only drive it for you, but I'll win the race. You wait and see. Thanks very much. Of course, you'll take care of everything. You'll leave that to me. Oh, thanks again. Well, goodbye, miss. Goodbye. Sorry if I caused you boys a little inconvenience, but I had to... Say! Keep... What about the franchise? Hey, Mr. What? Baker! Yes? Well, how about the franchise? Oh, we voted on that about an hour ago. <laughs> I was the only one who voted for Burnell. Well, <laughs> see you at Indianapolis. Oh, yeah. Nice work. If I can get down there, I'll get out. Bet she's out with that mutiny guy on the bounty. Hello, Stubby. Hello, Lucy. What are you doing? Say, Lucy, I've been trying to get you all afternoon. I've been trying to get you, too, but your life's been busy. Hey, Lucy, now tell me the truth now. Have you been out with that mutiny guy in the bounty with his yacht? Stop me! Lucy! Hello. 